All right, guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, I just want to do a quick video about high availability between two net scalers uh, in the lab. Today, we're working with uh, two VPXs that are on the same subnet. Uh, I already have them configured in HA, but we're going to do some stuff with this. We're going to break HA. I'm going to show you a little bit of how HA is working, uh, what you can do, what you uh, can't do. Um, basically, do some of the things that you read about, but you're not going to do in production. Uh, but I want to be able to show you uh, what that looks like if it were to occur, or if you're doing troubleshooting on a production equipment, uh, you can actually reference this video and say, well, it's, this is how that is, uh, that's communicating, the HA is working between the two, and I know I can safely uh, push this command through without breaking anything. So there's a lot to go over in HA. Um, feel free at any time, uh, like in the other videos, to just pause the video, look at the configuration, and take notes. Um, there's going to be a couple of things I'm going to fly through here today um, just to bring it all together for you so you have a, a better understanding of HA, hopefully, by the end of this. Um, and if you have questions, uh, feel free to always let me know. So as I mentioned, we're going to break HA. Uh, right now, I have two net scalers configured. Uh, the primary right now is on dot .200. The secondary is on dot .220. Like I said, this is a one-arm configuration because uh, all my interfaces are in the same subnet. Uh, what these net scalers are doing is they're publishing out a website here. We're just calling it uh, www.website.local. I have a host file entry for this uh, that's pointing to the VIP on the net scaler that's publishing it. So let's kind of do an overview of everything so you can see what's existing right now before we break it. So let's go to our primary. Let's start off by looking at traffic management. We'll go down here to servers. We have server green and server blue, uh, two different IPs. Here's our services that are monitoring those servers. Um, service green underscore 80 is just saying we're using HTTP on port 80 to monitor both of these servers. Uh, the websites in production uh, would be identical, uh, but for the lab, I've, enabled, I've uh, named one green and one blue. You can visually see when we transfer between them because we'll be doing a little bit with persistence here as well. Um, Going on up here, we'll go to virtual servers. And you can see they're combined here. Um, this is the VIP that my host file entry is pointing at for that website, 10.9.8.13. Uh, our load balancing method is round robin, and we have persistence enabled. So let's play with this just a little bit. Let's disable that persistence. So let's do, nope, we'll want to do round robin, sorry. Uh, that's our load balancing method, persistence, here we go. And we will do none, click OK, click Done. Now, we did that on the HA primary, uh, but we'll get to that in just a bit. So, all right, persistence is none, and we should be doing round robin. So let's see, is that working for us? There we go, hit blue and green. All right, we're balancing, round robin style. All right, so I'm gonna go back here and enable persistence. I'm gonna show you why, because it's important to know how persistence uh, is, is going to be communicated to your secondary with HA. Um, so that way when HA does a failover, uh, your clients or your sessions that are established uh, stay established and are shared amongst the net scalers. So when you do HA, you have a, a failover event, um, your clients won't really notice anything that's going on just because of the way that uh, it's is all talking in the background on your net scalers. They're sharing persistence, and I'm gonna show you here what that looks like. So um, we'll do source IP for persistence again. Timeout was set to 30 minutes, we'll click okay. Click done, change that quick. See if this works, we should go over to green and then we should be sticky there. There's green. All right, persistence is going. So let's take a look at persistence. Go here to traffic management. Uh, persistent sessions, and there I am. As you can see, it shows my source IP, destination, port, and basically my timeout. We switch over here to the secondary. We'll do the same thing, traffic management, view sessions, and it propagated over. So if we were using cookies, just to give you some information, some background here, if we were doing cookie persistence, uh, you would see nothing here. Um, mainly because persistence is just being handled by the cookie. And you can have a cookie set so that 
it's, it can expire within a certain amount of time. You can do like five minutes, 10 minutes, what have you. Um, and there's something you should watch out for that. That cookie's time can be based off of the client's local time or the time on the Netscaler. So that's a, a, another video down the road. But I just wanted to make you aware of that because it's a big gotcha. Um, if you set the timer to zero on a cookie, then it just becomes a session cookie. So what happens there is as soon as the, the session is terminated or the window is closed, um, the cookie expires, they connect back to the Netscaler, and um, they get a whole new cookie, and the persistence is sticky that way. But you won't ever see cookie persistence being represented here on the Netscaler because all it really does is it hands the client a cookie and says, all right, now there you go. You handle your own persistence. Every time you connect to me, I see your cookie, away you go. Um, just something to keep in mind. Cookie persistence uh, it does not cost anything on the Netscaler, or of course there's always some psycho there, but it's very, very, very minimal overhead on the Netscaler versus keeping track of all your sessions here on both of the, on both of the Netscalers. So enough about persistence. I'm getting away from myself. Let's get back to HA because I know that's what you're here for. So I mentioned we're going to break some things. So let's get this going. I wanted to get to traffic management on the secondary. Right now, how things are configured and how HA works is that uh, changes that you make on the primary are pushed to the secondary Netscaler. And I can show you that setting under high availability. Edit. You have these two options, HA synchronization and HA propagation. So propagation is what I was just talking about. When you make changes on the primary, it's pushed to the secondary. And that's how the communication works. And that's, that's it. No changes that you make on your secondary will ever, will ever go to your primary. There's a big warning page, uh, a flash page that kind of pops up in your face on the GUI that tells you if you're making changes to the secondary. Um, if you log in via CLI, you'll see it as well. It'll display a little banner that says, hey, you are logged into the secondary. Any changes you make here will not be uh, propagated to the primary. So uh, that's HA propagation in a nutshell. Another one is HA synchronization. And what that's doing is the secondary is grabbing the config file and grabbing uh, your certificates um, from your primary uh, at two different points. When link goes down and comes back up, like a failover event, if you will, in the secondary, so your secondary drops offline, comes back, it's going to say, hey, I'm back. I see the HA configuration, and I'm going to do a sync real quick and grab anything that I may have missed. And um, the second is when the primary becomes the secondary. So when a failover event happens, or you either you push it, or if you have it, uh, you you tell your Netscalers to do a, uh, to trigger failover, or something happens with your primary and it it drops offline, or what have you, it be, it comes back into the to the HA. Uh, I don't want to say cluster, uh, the HA configuration. Um, it will say, hey, I'm the secondary. I got to do a sync real quick. Give me all the files. Give me the config file um, in case I missed anything. So that's an overview of HA sync and propagation. And you can always look into that a little bit more on the eDocs page for, from Citrix. Or these uh, help tabs built into the web interface are just absolutely awesome. They give you more information about what's actually happening, uh, the TCP ports that are being, uh, that are being utilized, um, by that feature, all incredibly, incredibly valuable information to know in case you are troubleshooting because it doesn't work. But for the most part, uh, HA is very simple and it's really quick to configure. So you won't have to worry about that much, um, but it's always good to know that information in case of troubleshooting. So getting into this quick, uh, let's pull up that secondary go into traffic management, look at our uh, virtual servers that are configured. Taking a little bit longer than expected to load. Let's try services. Wow. Oh, okay, that was odd. Anyway, uh, getting back to this, had a little bit of a delay there, a hiccup in my virtual event scalers. Um, but pushing forward, I wanted to make you aware again, let's 
take a look at HA and how it's set up. Uh, we're going to look at ID first. ID 0 is going to identify the net scaler you are currently on. And if we, uh, whether you be via CLI or the web interface, uh, ID 0 is your net scaler that you're looking at. So here we can see dot 200 is the primary. And that means dot 220 is the secondary. So let's go in here quick and let's make some changes. Let's delete this. Yeah, delete this VS. Be gone. Refresh, it's gone. Let's go over here to the primary, traffic management, virtual servers, and it's still there. And let's see, is it still loading? Yep, still uh, refreshing for me. And I had a ping run in, and it's still pinging. So that's just a proof, uh, to show you real quickly, uh, proof of concept of, of what we're talking about. Those changes on the secondary are not propagated to the primary. But what we can do here is I can make a change to this. Rename this. Call it the website. And I click OK. The command failed on the secondary node, but succeeded on the primary mode. Node. The configuration will be synchronized. This is exactly what we were expecting. Click OK. Refresh. Then renamed here. Over here, do a refresh on the secondary. Give it a minute. And actually see this, go to system HA, synchronization state is in progress. There you go, success. Fresh. There we go. And it pushed it down, just like what we were talking about, uh, how HA works. So that's a real quick overview of, of being able to, you know, kind of break things here in the lab. Of course, you're not going to want to do that in production, but just for a proof of concept, you can actually see that when propagation happens, it's going to push everything down. As synchronization happens, it's going to grab from the secondary um, up to the primary and pull down that config. So let's break HA quick. I'll delete this off the primary. Yep, delete our HA node. Over here to the secondary. High availability. Delete this guy as well. All right, HA has been broken. And everything is still here, the way that we had it configured on both. In traffic management, we still have our VSs on both. And we're getting some odd behavior here because we have duplicate IPs happening um, on both net scalers. So this is, a, this is a bad situation to be in, but you shouldn't find yourself here just because this is a lab environment. But I'm going to delete this off of the what was the secondary? Delete the services, the VS, the servers. Let's get these out of here. We're going to be really malicious today. Clear this config right up. All right, there's nothing here on the secondary. Here's our primary. It's still here. Maybe we got a little bit of an art problem going on just because of the duplicate IPs. So we'll let this kind of... We'll let this buck a little bit, figure itself out, and continue on with our configuration. We'll come back to this. So go up to system, high availability. Do that on both of our nodes here. Both list themselves as primary right now. So we're going to take our primary net scaler, which already has VSs configured, and we're going to make it the uh, the primary in HA for the time being, because we don't want the secondary to come up, become primary, and nuke out our changes on our existing uh, net scaler, dot two hundred in this case. We want it so that we're going to take a new net scaler, put it in alongside the existing net scaler here, dot two hundred, and we're going to configure HA and sync the config. And I wanted to do it like this because it's a good overview. In the event that you are working with a client that has an existing Netscaler um, and you want to do this without breaking anything. Now, of course, back up your config before you attempt this, but I'll show you how to do it here in lab so it'll help you in production if you ever find yourself in that situation. For the most part, you'll be configuring two Netscalers that are freshly racked, freshly powered. You just IP'd them and licensed them and they have no config on them and it wouldn't matter at all which one you decided to begin your config on 
you would just kind of pick one at, at a later point to be the primary, or you would just kind of let it be. Because um, in HA, it doesn't really matter which is primary or which is secondary. They're both doing the same thing. One's running active, and the other's running passive. So let's get back to it here. Let's add, oh, let's not add just yet. I'm going to click on ID 0, which is us, the next code you're looking at. We're going to edit that in eight, under HA. By default, these settings are all as they're listed here today. But under the high availability status, I'm going to change the one I have config on to stay primary. I'm going to click OK. And on the secondary, you're probably going to guess it, but we're going to go here and do stay secondary. And click OK. All right. So they're both like hard set right now. One's primary, one's secondary. And now we're going to add the secondary on the primary, right, HA node, add node, and then going to put in the IP address of the secondary, you know, fresh net scaler, no config on it, leave the defaults defined here, and we're going to put in the user account that is active that you can log into the net scaler with. Whoops. Yes. Root is the default. All right. Now we're going to give this a minute to kind of sort itself out. Over here in the secondary, everything's kind of coming up. So going back to what we talked about earlier on, the primary is syncing the configuration. It, it, we made changes on the primary. It's pushing that down to the secondary. And now synchronization is in, in progress. And it looks like we had a success. Here we go. So on the secondary, let's go look at our VSs. Ah, look, there it is. Services, servers are all up. We did not nuke out our config, which is a good thing. Go back over here to the primary. Now, go to ID0 once again. In this case, for me, it's going to be .200 is going to be my primary. I'm going to do edit. Change that high availability status to enabled, click OK. You can see the node state changed. Go over here to the secondary. Do the same exact thing. Set it to enabled, click OK, and voila. We just, we broke some things and we, <laughs> and we fixed some things. And now HA is configured between these two devices and they are seeking their configs.